The Vietnamese used many different fighting tactics, one of which was called guerrilla warfare. Guerrilla warfare was the original basis of all combat in ancient wars and continues to be a formidable fighting technique to hold up against a stronger force. The North Vietnamese put this technique into practice by hiding in bushes, waiting for their enemy to walk by and then ambush them. They would hide in trees and wait for whole squadrons of men in platoons to walk near them and at that instant they would spring out and expose themselves and quickly take out American forces or South Vietnamese forces. The North Communists would hide anywhere they could, either underwater, above the trees, or even underground. The North Vietnamese used this method of fighting to stand against the United States in the war. The reason guerrilla warfare was so successful was because the North knew how the jungles of Vietnam worked. They knew how to hide, they knew how to wait, and how to ambush maximum casualties on the opposing side. American forces arriving at the front line do not know the jungle at all, making them less of a fighter compared to any Viet Cong or NVA force. It is no surprise that the Americans have the most overwhelming firepower of the 20th century. The United States military had spent about $298.5 billion annually during the Cold War, making them a force to be reckoned with. The North Vietnamese forces, including the NVA and the Viet Cong, very well knew that in terms of firepower, they stood no chance. As a show of force, and to stop the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the United States issued Operation Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder was a sustained bombing of many different cities, villages, and areas throughout Vietnam. The sheer power of these bombings put fear into the North Vietnamese hearts, but they quickly devised a solution to stand against these bombings. They built intricate underground tunnels, now known as rat tunnels. These tunnels were nothing big in size, partly due to the fact that the Vietnamese forces had no time to build a bigger shelter, and a smaller tunnel is harder to be caught. The entrances to these tunnels were usually underwater passages hidden to the naked eye, and or a little trap door like entries concealed by heavy vegetation. tunnels were usually made as a haven for Viet Cong fighters and villagers of North and South Vietnam. These tunnels were composed of many different parts, including false tunnels, punji stake traps, air shafts, connectors to other tunnels and other chambers, a hospital room, sleeping chambers, a storeroom with weapons and supplies, a conference chamber, and a kitchen.
many Vietnamese would hold up for months at a time inside these rat tunnels to survive the increasing bombings of Operation Rolling Thunder. Punji sticks will be placed in areas likely to be passed through enemy troops. The presence of punji sticks may be camouflaged by natural undergrowth, crops, grass, brush, or similar materials. They were often incorporated into various types of traps, for example, a camouflaged pit into which a man might fall in. In December 1965, Ho Chi Minh and a North Vietnamese leadership ordered a change in a way the war in the South was to be fought. From now on, the Viet Cong would avoid pitched battles with Americans and the odds clearly in their favor. There would be more hit and run attacks and ambushes. To counter the American buildup, Viet Cong recruitment would be stepped up and more North Vietnamese army troops would be infiltrated into South Vietnam. One of the many reasons that fighting the unofficial army of North Vietnam, the Viet Cong, was so difficult was because it was almost impossible to tell who the real enemy was. The Viet Nam wore no badge or emblem to represent their beliefs in communist North Vietnam. Instead, they were regular people who opposed the views of the American. For example, a regular farmer by day who stops you to say hello may try to blow your head off later that same day while being hidden in the trees. This was a common problem between American troops not being able to distinguish who the real enemy was. This problem sadly led to the My Lai Massacre, an incident that gave every Vietnam soldier and veteran a bad name, making the war very unpopular back in the United States. The NLF, or the National Liberation Front from North Vietnam, launched a coordinated attacks against major southern cities. These attacks are known in the West as the Tet Offensive. The Tet Offensive was a strategic military planned attack from the North Vietnamese attacking on the Tet Holiday, the day that everyone was supposed to rest. Many different cities across the country were attacked by North Vietnamese, including Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam. Although the Americans were successful in pushing back the enemy, this was more seen as a moral loss because the North was supposedly close to giving up on the war, but by coordinating a powerful offensive attack, it proved that the war was far from ending. One of the main reasons that the United States ended up losing to a third world country Vietnam was because that in this war there was no real goal. 
Of course, the United States wanted to stop communism by following the domino theory, but there was no goal to get in the war. There was no plan to invade the capital of the north of Vietnam. There was no strategic point from which they could turn the tide of war. There was just pointless killing, which ultimately led to a decrease in morale between troops and the body count system was invented because of this. There was no end point to the war. There was no foreseeable conclusion. 